Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Previously, we covered the Griffin and Cat School sets, and in this video, I'll be covering the Bear School Ursign set, all the way to Grandmaster. If that sounds good to you, then make sure to smack that thumbs up. Damn good. Check out this chart. As you can see, there's a total of four optional maps, which you can purchase from various traders, revealing the locations of all the Bear School diagrams, from basic to enhanced, superior, then master crafted. To upgrade to the top tier Grand Master level, you first need to upgrade the Witcher gear to the master crafted level, then complete a level 40 quest in the Blood and Wine expansion, to gain access to the only Grand Master crafter in the entire game. This is all explained in detail later in the video. For now, we'll focus on attaining all diagrams up to and including Mastercrafted quality, which is all achieved in the base game. When you purchase any of the maps, make sure to locate them in your inventory under quest items. This will update the related scavenger hunt quest under the treasure hunt section with new relevant information. As you'll learn, all Witcher Gear quests are always named Scavenger Hunts for easy identification. Reading any one of the four maps in this guide will always start a new base quest called Scavenger Hunt Bear School Gear, which reveals the location of all basic level diagrams for the Bear School Witcher set. This basic set of equipment is required before any quality upgrades can take place. Included in this basic set is the Ursine Crossbow, and this is the only piece of equipment that cannot be upgraded beyond its basic quality. Reading the first and second maps reveals the locations for all the enhanced level Bear School diagrams, marked as upgrade diagrams parts 1 and 2 respectively in the quest menu. Reading the third map reveals the locations for all the superior Bear School diagrams, marked as upgrade diagrams parts 3 in the quest menu. Reading the final fourth map reveals the locations for all the master crafted Bear School diagrams, marked as upgrade diagrams part 4 in the quest menu. All four of these maps can be purchased from the same armourer located at the Care Trolled Port City in Skellige, situated just outside the entrance to the Citadel, as shown here. Lower qualities of the Bear School Witcher gear are prerequisite to the next. This means to be able to craft the top tier Grandmaster quality, you first need to craft every quality level from basic to master crafted. Only then will the Grandmaster option be accessible for crafting. Remember, amateur level craftsmen cannot craft any Witcher School gear, even at their most basic level, due to inexperience. You need to visit journeyman skilled crafters who have the ability to piece together basic enhanced and superior Witcher gear, while Master Crafted and Grand Master equipment can only be created by Master and Grand Master level crafters respectively. This means we first need to find all basic level diagrams before any of these upgrades can take place. Go ahead and highlight the base quest simply named Scavenger Hunt Bear School Gear to make it your next quest objective. All seven basic diagrams are located in the country of Skellige, so make sure you've progressed far enough into the story to unlock access to these islands. Head to the Uriella Harbour signpost located in the northwest islands of Anne Skellig. After arriving, head out of the harbour taking the northeast path. Continue along the dirt path passing the arena on your left, then take a right off the main track following the small path heading east. Continue in an easterly direction, sticking left along the path, which slowly winds round to the north. Continue past the Ingvar's Trail signpost, and head through the two stone pillars to cross a small wooden bridge just ahead. Continue to take the route as shown here, carefully navigating the winding path up the mountain, while traversing treacherous gaps and high ledges. Eventually you'll reach a wooden door to your right, leading into the remains of a dilapidated fort. Enter the fort and notice a barred throne room straight ahead, securely locked down from the other side. This throne room houses your reward, so gaining entry is your priority. To the left of this barred gate, you'll notice some stairs spiralling down to the lower dungeon. Head down these stone steps now, and feel free to light any wall-mounted torches on the way, 
for orientation. When you reach the lower level, you'll notice a block of locked prison cells, guarded by some wraiths, which form as you proceed through the area. Head to the opposite end of the dungeon, and on the south wall, you'll notice a wooden lever. Activate this lever to open all the cell gratings, allowing access to what's inside. The cell to the southeast of the block has a large hole in its floor, providing access to the subterranean tunnels below. Go ahead and drop down into the tunnels to explore the stone catacombs beneath. Head up the long stone steps to the right which lead to the north. Then at the top, proceed around the corner to the left where you can climb up a couple of rocky ledges. At the end of this passage are some rock boulders, which when cleared with a blast of Ard, will lead straight into the gated throne room housing your prize. Head straight for the northeast corner of the room where you'll notice a glittering chest, which when looted, rewards you with the basic diagrams for all four wearable pieces. The armour, boots, gauntlets and trousers, as well as the Chronicler's Tome, which upon reading, updates the quest and reveals the location of the next basic diagram in the Bear School set. Now activate the lever located on the wall to the right of the locked gate to open it and leave the fort. It's worth noting that outside, just opposite the fort's wooden door, is a rocky ledge you can climb, which is the beginning of another treacherous path which leads all the way up to Ingvar's Fang, the most northern signpost of Skelliger Isles. At this location, you'll find the Trial of Dexterity quest item, as well as a place of power, so it's well worth the effort. Next up, head to the small village of Rhone, which is situated to the northern end of Ard Skellig, the central main landmass as shown here on the map. After arriving, head northeast out of the settlement across a narrow wooden bridge, which runs alongside the village's fishing lake. Keep following the dirt path which descends all the way down and follow it round at the bottom as it takes a left U-turn leading back up the other side of the mountain heading northwest. Near the top you'll notice the archway of a stone bridge gatehouse which leads straight into the ruins of Fort Etnir itself. Pass under the archway and keep following the dirt path ahead which now runs alongside a flowing stream. Just ahead you'll notice a small broken wooden bridge and just beyond a lake, blanketed with a wispy fog. Continue along the path, passing the lake on your right hand side. When you reach the top of the path, you'll notice some stone steps, leading directly onto the crumbling grounds of the fallen fort. Guarding this area are two level 13 gargoyles, and a level 30 ice elemental. Once they're dealt with, head into the doorway of the ruined watchtower, located to the northeast of the area. Here, you'll find some skeletal remains on the floor, which when looted, reward you with the basic silver sword diagram. Make sure to also read the knight's letter, which will update the quest and reveal the location of the next basic diagram in the Bear School set. Next up, fast travel to the old watchtower signpost located to the south end of Speaker Room, which is the small isle to the very northwest of Skellige, as shown here. After arriving, follow the dirt track and head south from the signpost down toward the ocean. Simply sprint past the level 21 cyclops roaming the area, and continue down the dusty path where you'll notice several sirens patrolling the shoreline skies. When you reach the coastline, follow the path east and keep sprinting toward a cave entrance, just ahead on the left. If necessary, slaughter any aggressive sirens that hinder your progress. Then immediately after entering the cave, turn to your right to climb a rocky ledge just past some stalagmites. Jump across the small gap ahead, then climb another rocky ledge on the other side. Now take a running leap to jump across the main tunnel pathway, landing on a ledge above the main watery cavern. Here, you'll find some skeletal remains amongst some stalagmites, which holds the basic crossbow diagram, as well as some notes, which when read, reveals the location of the seventh and final basic diagram on your map. Remember, the crossbow is the only piece of equipment that cannot be upgraded beyond its basic quality. Next up, head to the Ruined Inn Fast Travel Signpost, located to the south end of Ard Skellig, as shown here on the map. After arrival, head up the stone steps and head north up onto the wooden remains of a collapsed inn, which appears to have sustained major fire damage. Head down the stone steps in the north corner, 
leading you into the cellar where you'll be confronted by two level 20 wraiths. Within the small bedroom in the south corner, you'll notice a glittering chest, which when looted, rewards you with the final basic diagram for the steel sword. This now concludes the initial base quest Scavenger Hunt Bear School Gear, allowing you to craft a full set of basic quality Bear School Witcher gear at any journeyman or higher skilled craftsman. Moving on, we'll locate all the enhanced diagrams for the Bear School set, marked as parts 1 and 2 in the quest entry, each part reveals the locations of three enhanced diagrams, six in total, allowing you to upgrade all the gear to the next level of quality. Make sure to go ahead and select part one as your next quest objective. Just like all basic diagrams, all enhanced diagrams are also found in Skelliger Isles. To the northern end of Ard Skellig, you'll find a fast travel point named Eustiana's Grotto, as shown here. Travel there now, and after arriving, head east from the signpost following the dirt track. Continue along the path, and after a while, you'll notice some snow-covered mountains. When the dirt path ends and is completely covered by snow, take an immediate right to proceed up the snowy incline. Continue directly ahead, passing some bushes and trees. Just past the rocky verge to your right, you'll notice the entrance to the remains of an ocean-facing fort. Defeat all the enemies that may be occupying the entrance, then proceed into the courtyard and cross the fallen debris to enter the fort, where more enemies will be waiting. After dealing with them, follow the corridor north, then southwest, to drop down a hole in the floor leading to an earthy subterranean tunnel. Continue along the narrow passageway until you reach a larger room at the end. In the southeast corner of this room, you'll find a sturdy chest which houses the enhanced silver sword diagram. To the southwest of Ard Skellig, you'll find a fast travel point named Wild Shore, as shown here on the map. From the signpost, head east through the forest until you come across a dirt track. Follow this track in a southerly direction, and after a short distance, you'll notice a high rocky verge to the left. After passing this rocky verge, take the narrow dirt path heading northeast and continue up the mountain along its winding route. At the top, you'll find a snowy cave entrance protruding from the slopes, which is the home to three level 16 trolls. Enter the cave and proceed to the end into the large room to the south where the trolls reside. They won't be friendly, so prepare to take them down if you can't avoid detection. Search for a wooden chest along the western side of the main room amongst a pile of boating debris. Once looted, you'll be rewarded with the enhanced boots diagram. Next up, travel to the Grotto signpost located to the southeastern shores of Ard Skellig, as shown here. It's difficult to reach this area on land, so if you haven't already unlocked this point, simply take a boat from a neighbouring village and approach via the shoreline. After arriving, enter the flooded cave and proceed through the northwestern tunnel following the marker which takes you through into the next cavern. Proceed through this room, past all the stalagmites and stalactites, to continue into a short tunnel on the southwestern side, leading into a final smaller room. The guy in this area is related to a quest named The Sad Tale of the Grossbart Brothers. Sitting to the rear of this room, at the foot of a mattress, is a wooden chest containing the enhanced armor diagram. Now you have acquired the enhanced silver sword, boots and armor diagrams, this concludes part 1 of the quest, so go ahead and activate part 2 as your next quest objective, revealing the locations of the remaining 3 enhanced diagrams. To the northern end of Ard Skellig, you'll once again find the small village of Rome. Return to this settlement and take the same route you did to reach Fort Etnir by heading northeast out of the settlement and across a narrow wooden bridge, which runs alongside the villagers' fishing lake. Keep following the dirt path which descends all the way down and follow it round at the bottom as it takes a left U-turn, leading back up the other side of the mountain heading northwest. Continue up the incline along the dirt path, and shortly after passing under the archway of the Stone Bridge Gatehouse, you'll notice some stone steps to the right, leading up and on to the gatehouse itself. The collapsed watchtower at the top houses a wooden chest, which upon looting, rewards you with the enhanced Gauntlet's diagram. To the west of Skelliger, just south of Speakeroog, 
sits a small isolated island home to a crumbling prison fortress named Kerr Olmholt. Travel to this prison island now, heading west from the jetty and proceed inland toward the location of the abandoned ruins. The entirety of Prison Island is now a haven for pirates, so expect heavy resistance on your way and after arriving at the fortress. Once all enemies are dealt with, head into the grounds of the demolished courtyard of the prison, passing an upturned transport wagon to your right. Proceed north up the stone steps along the western wall, leading into some ruined battlements at the top. Here, you'll find a sturdy wooden chest which houses the enhanced steel sword diagram. To the west of Skellige, you'll find one of the larger isles named Undvik. Located to the northeast of this isle, you'll find the settlement of Marlin Coast. Travel to this signpost now, and upon arrival, hop in the boat by the jetty and travel northeast across the ocean waters, toward a small cluster of islands. When you reach the surrounding snowy grounds of a smuggler's cavern, disembark on the rocky shore, with conifer trees and bushes out the front of an icy entrance. Climb up the rock ledge and clear the ice, blocking the cave mouth using a blast of art. Then proceed inside to locate a chest, which when looted, rewards you with the enhanced trousers diagram. This now concludes parts 1 and 2 of the quest, allowing you to craft a full set of enhanced quality Bear School Witcher gear at any journeyman or higher skilled craftsman. Now we'll move on to locating all the superior Bear School diagrams, which unlike all previous diagrams, are all found in Velen. Marked as part 3 in the quest entry, make sure to have this active as your next quest objective. First up, travel to the Hanged Man's Tree signpost, located in the centre of Velen, as shown here on the map. From the tree, head northwest, hopping over the broken wooden fence and journeying in to the rolling woods ahead. In the middle of the forest, search out the remains of an abandoned rock quarry and locate its west-facing entrance down a rocky slope. Remain vigilant as you advance toward the quarry workings, as the first time you visit this location, several Neckers will be occupying the area. Once they're taken care of, enter the cave and after a short distance, just past the wooden support beams on the left, is an alcove, where you'll find a wooden chest housing the superior diagrams for all four wearable pieces. As you'll notice, I've already looted these diagrams during a previous excursion. Next up, head to the Ruined Tower signpost, located to the southeast of Velen, just a short distance to the east of the Orphans of Crookback Bog. After arrival, proceed into the area with caution, as a level 25 Earth Elemental patrols the sagging stone battlements. Bring it down if Geralt is suitably equipped. If not, then to avoid its wrath, Head southeast from the signpost to circle the external perimeter of the ruins in a counterclockwise direction. Your reward is nestled against an interior wall in the eastern corner of the ruins. Approaching from the outside, hop onto the stone ledge through the damaged section of wall to quickly loot the superior steel sword diagram from the chest within. Now fast travel to the orphan signpost of Crookback Bog, just southwest of the ruined tower as shown here. From the signpost, head southwest across the treacherous marshlands of the bog. Simply sprint past all the monsters to avoid confrontation or take them down for easy XP and materials. As you near the quest marker, you'll approach a rocky hillside with a rock boulder illusion hiding the entrance to a cave. This illusion needs to be dismissed using the Eye of Nehalini, and as you can see here, I've already performed this task during a previous visit. After dismissing the illusion, enter the cave, and immediately check the alcove to the east, where you'll notice the corpse of a soldier slumped up against a wooden chest. Looting this chest rewards you with the superior silver sword diagram. This now concludes part 3 of the quest, allowing you to craft a full set of superior quality bear school witcher gear at any journeyman or higher skilled craftsman. Now we'll move on to locating all the master crafted diagrams which are all found in Velen. Marked as part 4 in the quest entry, make sure to have this active as your next quest objective. Your next destination is located near the small village of Blackbow, which lies to the far west of Velen as shown here. 
After arrival, head northwest out of the settlement and into the grassy woodlands, which back onto the Pella's hut. As you follow the marker, you'll notice the forest is currently overrun by Neckers, so put them all to rest before proceeding. Approaching the quest marker, you'll notice a tall cave entrance. Once inside, drop down a couple of rocky ledges and proceed into the main cavernous area. As you proceed, you'll notice a large stalagmite to the northeast of the main room. Amongst the bracken and behind a broken wagon sits a mossy wooden chest containing the master crafted steel sword diagram. Along the southern border of Velen itself lies a destroyed bastion, a short distance southwest from the crossroads signpost as shown here. At the outer crenellations, expect an encounter with a wyvern, as well as a level 19 cyclops when you reach the top of the hill where the crumbling bastion remains. To avoid conflict with the cyclops, run around the outside of the northern wall, passing an archway barred with metal rods then enter through to the collapsed rear part of the ruined walls from the east. Tucked hidden in the corner at the bottom of a large pile of collapsed rubble and dirt lies a chest containing the mastercrafted diagrams for all four wearable pieces, the armour, gauntlets, trousers and boots. To complete your collection of mastercrafted diagrams, head to Olina's Grove to the south of Velen, close to the border between the Mire and Crookback Bog. From the Grove signpost, head northeast out of the area and across the grassy marshlands. After a short distance, you'll come across a promontory with the remains of a campfire, which reveals the sign of the wolf when investigated. Head on over to the small Drowner Island, a short swim to the northwest from your current location. When you reach the island, take care of the Drowners occupying the area, then drop a bomb into the monster nest to prevent their offspring. At the top of the mound behind a rock, notice a hole in the earth, evidently dug out to conceal a reinforced chest. Looting this chest rewards you with the master crafted silver sword diagram. This now concludes part 4 of the quest, allowing you to craft a full set of master crafted quality Bear School Witcher gear at any master or grandmaster skilled craftsman. Note, only craftsmen ranked at master level will be able to produce master crafted quality equipment. Hattori, who's situated just outside the market square in Novigrad City, is the only master blacksmith available in the base game, while the only master armourer available in the base game is Joanna, who works with the dwarf Fergus at Crow's Perch, within the grounds of the Bloody Baron. To unlock the services of these two master craftsmen, lengthy side quests will first need to be completed by speaking with them in person. Finally, we need to locate all six Grandmaster diagrams, allowing you to create the ultimate version of the Bear School Witcher gear. This final scavenger hunt quest has a recommended level of 40, and is only available in the Blood and Wine expansion. As previously mentioned, master crafted equipment is a prerequisite before Grandmaster crafting options become available. When you reach the country of Toussaint, head to the Grand Place signpost in the capital city as shown here. Just to the south of this point is a workshop owned by a master craftsman named Lazar Lafargue, who can produce both weapons and armour at master crafted quality from the moment you set foot inside his shop. Speak to Lafargue to unlock the scavenger hunt related to the Grand Master diagrams you wish to obtain, in this case the bear. Now go ahead and activate the new scavenger hunt Grand Master Ursine gear quest to make it your next quest objective. The first three Grand Master diagrams are located in the village of Flovive, located in the middle of Toussaint in the Sans Retour marsh as shown here. From the signpost, head toward the northeastern area of the village where you'll notice a collapsed building with caved in foundations. Head past the well and into the backyard where you'll notice rocks and wood collapsed over a hole in the floor. Using a blast of ard, clear the debris to reveal an entrance to what used to be a wine cellar. Head down into the rocky tunnels and immediately to the right, sitting in an alcove, you'll notice a glittering wooden chest, which contains Grandmaster diagrams for the silver sword, breastplate and gauntlets. Read the owner's notes within regarding Tofu's contract to reveal the location of the final three Grandmaster diagrams. 
The next location is a short distance northwest of your current location in Flovi Village. From the signpost, head northwest past the Tofu Vineyard and keep following the dirt path across the wooden bridge. When the path heads east, break off northwest and descend down into the lightly wooded Marcescent Forest, where brown bears may be lurking in the shadows. After a short distance, you'll come across an idyllic and shallow body of water, known as Filament Stream. On the northern side of this pond is a cave entrance, which descends deep down into the earth. This cave is rife with giant centipedes, so take care of any that are foolish enough to obstruct your investigation. Immediately after entering the cave, you'll find some bedding on the floor as well as a useful letter, both found in a small room to the northwest. This room is initially blocked with rubble, which can be jumped over or quickly cleared with a blast of ard. The letter gives a clue to follow the witch's bear symbols he marks on the walls, which lead to his location and thus the remaining diagrams. Go ahead and use your witcher sensors to reveal the symbols on the walls, and use them to navigate your way through the winding tunnels. Keep pushing forward through the tunnels, and when you reach this junction shown here, drop down from the ledge and head left away from where the stream runs. If you instead follow the stream to the right, this will lead into a giant lair allowing you to complete the Tofu Monster contract. For now, continue left and head into the small room at the end, which contains the skeletal remains of the Bear School Witcher. Examine the corpse to loot the final three Grandmaster diagrams for the trousers, steel sword and boots. This now concludes the Grandmaster Ursine Gear quest, allowing you to craft a full set of Grandmaster quality Bear School Witcher gear at Lazar Lafargue's specialised workshop. Now head back to Lafargue in Toussaint so he can make copies of the plans and become the only Grandmaster crafter in the game. He'll then be able to craft you the best possible Ursine armour known to man, elf or dwarf, as well as craft any other Grandmaster Witcher gear for which you have the diagrams. Remember, when it comes to Witcher gear, two unique perk bonuses are activated when you upgrade a full Witcher set to Grandmaster quality. One perk is awarded when you equip three Grandmaster pieces, and a second when you equip all six. These bonuses are unique to each school, and will take a significant amount of resources to unlock. So make sure to research them before making any final decisions on which sets you want to max out. If you learned a thing or two from this video, please punch that thumbs up, and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more quality content from Gamer Grey. Every like and sub helps me tremendously and will allow me to make more kick-ass videos in future. I'm Jay, peace out and I'll see you 